Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. We join you today from the golf course, a place where you typically wouldn't think too much about agriculture. But this golf course is the site of a unique research project that could someday be really beneficial to agricultural producers. We begin with SUNUP's Austin Moore. Phosphorus is an important agricultural chemical, but in terms of our watersheds, it can be a problem because of runoff. Here to help us understand some of why that problem exists is Chad Penn, a soil chemist here at Oklahoma State. Now, Chad, y'all are doing some good research here on phosphorus in the watershed, uh, but first of all, help us understand why it can be a problem. Well, uh, as you know, uh, phosphorus is a necessary uh, agricultural chemical. We absolutely need it to grow crops, but uh, too much of it can be a problem as it gets uh, built up in the soil and transported and run off. When it reaches surface water bodies, phosphorus tends to be the limiting nutrient. Okay. And then you have an explosion of growth of algae and plants, and uh, that's not a good thing for the, for the ecosystem. Dissolved oxygen levels plummet, right. and you can have fish kills, and it makes it very difficult for boating and things like that. Right. So obviously we want to try and control that some ways. What are the things that are important to look at when you're looking at controlling th that entrance into the waterways? Well, uh, first of all, there, there's two main forms of phosphorus that are it's transported and runoff, and uh, the first main one is particulate phosphorus, and that's just phosphorus that's absorbed on the soil particles that's transported with the erosion of soils. And we can control that by best management practices that simply reduce erosion, things like no-till and buffer strips. But dissolved phosphorus, that's uh, much more difficult to control. As soils become more uh, built up with, with phosphorus, uh, even when you control the erosion, you still leak a little bit of dissolved phosphorus every time it rains, and it takes a long time uh, for that system to, to recover. All right, now here at OSU, y'all have developed a, a device for dealing with this. Why don't we take a look at that? All right. All right. All right, now Chad, what are we looking at here? This is an example of a phosphorus removal structure. Mm -hmm. This is designed to actually remove dissolved phosphorus in runoff from the watershed. Okay. And the main uh, component to this technology is the, is the material that absorbs the phosphorus. Right, and that's this kind of gravel here. Yeah, in this case, uh, this, is, this is a steel slag. This is a byproduct of the, of the steel industry, and huh. this particular slag came from Fort Smith, Arkansas. So, what, now how does this work? Water flows in here through these pipes. Yes, so we have, we have water coming through. Um, 150 acre watershed, we have a lot of water right. coming down through through this culvert up above us, uh, down the cart pass from all over. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> water gets into this uh, apron area and you see the, the uh, uh, inlet pipes. Right. <clears throat> These are connected Good to a series. series of those. Yep, a whole series of perforated pipes directly underneath our Running our underneath here. And it distributes the water evenly among the, the sorption material. Right. We have about, underneath that, we have a total of about eight to nine inches of, of steel slag. Okay, so this slag is only you know, less than a foot deep. Yes. So now as the water travels through, the phosphorus then attaches on to the slag. Yes, that's right. So phosphorus sorbs to the, to the material, um, drains straight down through, it's sorbed, and then you have clean water coming out through the drain pipe. Down the drain pipe and down the normal water channel. And down the channel. Okay, now what's the lifespan on this? I assume at some point it saturates and it's not gonna take any more phosphorus. Yeah, that's, 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 that's exactly the premise of this technology, how it works, that uh, once it becomes saturated with phosphorus, you can actually dig it, uh, dig it out, take it out, remove it. You actually have removed the phosphorus from the watershed. Now this particular structure, uh, every structure will vary. It depends on the material that you have, how much material is in it. It depends on the watershed itself, how much flow, uh, right. the concentration of phosphorus in it. Okay. But for this particular structure, it'll last about six months. We have, we have water coming in here. It's heavy on phosphorus. Hopefully leaving without, what, what have you actually found in the research? What are the numbers that we're looking at? Overall, uh, and, and at the, it's been in now for, for about six months, and this is the point now where it's pretty much, it's very close to being saturated. Overall, we've removed 25% of all the dissolved phosphorus that's come down through this watershed. 150 acre watersheds, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, 25%. Yes, sir. Now, if you had another one further down that would take out more and so on, just depending on how many are set in, yes. you could really do the job pretty easily. Sure, this, we only have three tons of slag in this, in this particular structure. Well, and let's talk for another, another thing too, is people are, we're not talking about an incredibly expensive structure here. I mean, we've, we're talking about basically a still, still bin, some tubing, slag, 
what kind of cost are we looking at? The slag we, we got from free uh, from a steel mill in Fort Smith, Arkansas. The cost was for transport. We sieved it also at a, at a nearby gravel quarry okay. when we were there. A little cost there. Yeah, there was some cost transporting for the sieving and then uh, cost for the steel and we hired a professional welder. Uh, total cost of this structure was about uh, $2,500. That's not bad. And then most of that is reusable too. I mean, that, that's a point to be made here. That's an You're excellent point. You're talking about something point. that's going to yeah. stay there. The slag has to be replaced. That's it. But yeah. this thing's solid. Yeah. The monitoring is, is actually the expensive part of this, but uh, that's only for research. That, that's something you're doing here, not what people will be doing in their own, in their own operation. Now, I guess once you've taken the, the, the slag is full up, you've pulled it out then, can you repurpose that? Can you use this stuff usefully then? Or is it just another, uh, find a safer place to put it than the watershed? Some of the materials actually, once they become saturated with phosphorus, some of the materials could be used as a, a phosphorus fertilizer. We've done some okay. research on that. Some of the byproduct gypsum, for example, would, would make a good phosphorus fertilizer. But this slag material, you can see by the particle size on it so large, mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to till that into your soil. Right. Um, one thing that we would like to test out with this once it's completely spent is uh, uh, use it as a mulch. Okay. Uses them as, as, as a decorative mulch around trees. Some of the people in the horticulture yeah. department are, are interested in that. But uh, the reuse of it, it depends on the material. And I, I should add, this isn't something just for, uh, it's not necessarily for, it's not for golf courses. It's not only for residential areas or farms. Anywhere where you have a, right. a high source of dissolved phosphorus. And so, soil phosphorus can get built up um, by chemical fertilizer or animal manures, anything like that. So anywhere you have a, a buildup of phosphorus, this could potentially be. And of course, yeah, in agriculture, we've got a number of examples at uh, chicken farms, feedlots, uh, down the list, yeah, quite a few examples. examples. All right, well, thank you for sharing with us. It's a very interesting subject. It's my pleasure. All right. Mm -hmm.